Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Locus, released in the year 2005. The movie begins in a USDA research lab in Virginia. A couple comes into the lab at night to feed the experimental swarm of Australian plague locusts. They plan to complete the task quickly and go on a date. Willie is an outsider who is horrified at the sight of the insects. He refuses to go inside the box to help feed them while his girlfriend Gina laughs at him and does it herself. The box has two glass doors, one of which requires a code to be opened. After she gets inside with a ficus tree as food, the first door is supposed to be closed so none of the insects can escape. Gina is so confident that she doesn't bother wearing protective gear before making direct contact with the insects. She soon realizes that it was a mistake when the insects start to attack and bite her. Willie runs to help her but doesn't know the code to the door. Even while being continuously attacked by hundreds of locusts, she blurts out the code, letting him in. Finally, he uses the protective coat to dust the insects away and brings her out of the box. The couple is out of breath and shaken by what they just experienced. Somewhere else in Washington, the U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, Maddie Riordan, is with her husband, Dan. They have planned to spend the day together before Maddie leaves for a different state that evening. However, their plan is disturbed when Maddie gets a call from her assistant, Vivian. She informs her about a USDA lab that has been red flagged by the GAO. Maddie is surprised because she is uninformed of any dangerous experiments taking place in the lab. She tries to investigate using her security contacts, only to find that the information is classified. Because the matter is suspicious, she has to find out about the experiment before her flight that evening. Hence, she ditches the plans with her husband and asks her assistant to be in said lab in 15 minutes. Dan is irritated by the fact that she never has time for him. He has given up a promotion and a salary raise to be there with her. So when she has to go to work, he's even more frustrated. At the lab, Maddie meets her former professor, Dr. Peter Axelrod, who is also the researcher she's supposed to investigate. Peter takes her to the lab where the experimental locusts are being kept. To show what he's created, he extracts a single locust from inside the box and squirts it with a pesticide. To Maddie's surprise, the pesticide does nothing to the insect, meaning that it's immune to it. Peter adds that he has created a hybrid by crossing Australian plague locusts with the desert locust. The genetically modified locusts are resistant to all known pesticides. They reproduce 10 times faster than normal locusts, and they live for several years. Maddie realizes that even if one of the insects is let out, it can reproduce at an exponential rate and destroy continents causing locust plagues. She declares the experiment is a bioweapon and assumes it is being funded by the Department of Defense. In the end, she has no way but to order the officials to destroy all the hybrid locusts. She also fires Peter from the lab for conducting unethical and dangerous experiments. Following that, scientists with protective suits and flamethrowers exterminate all the locusts. One of them secretly saves a handful of insects in a tube labeled biohazard. He has been tipped by the Department of Defense to acquire them. While changing, he accidentally drops the jar in a sink, causing several locusts to escape down the drain. Later, we see the escaped locusts flying away through a manhole. Maddie returns home several hours later to Dan waiting for her. He calmly tells her that he cannot be with her anymore because she prioritizes her work more than him. Maddie cannot convince him otherwise with the little time she has before catching the flight to go on her next mission. Meanwhile, in Maryland, the exterminator brings the remaining insects that he had retrieved from the lab. The case is then transferred to an army truck. Suddenly, the man driving the vehicle is attacked by an unknown insect that looks like the locust that escaped earlier. The accident causes the case to drop off the vehicle and be crushed. The insects inside it are let free into the air. One month after the incident, Maddie discovers she is pregnant and calls Dan. He receives the call but has to end it before she can tell him the news. In the following scene, we see a couple camping by the river. 
They wake up to see their tent is filled with hundreds of locusts. Then a few hours later, a swarm descends on the Napa Valley, causing farmers to run in fear. Maddie, who is on the road with her team, also sees the same swarm flying overhead. They immediately begin to track its pattern. Somewhere else, Peter is at home discussing their financial condition with his wife. Now that he's unemployed, they're worried about their daughter, Sophia. Peter accompanies Sophia to the bus stop, then makes his way to the gym. Suddenly, he hears a strange buzz getting louder by the second. He stops by a cornfield and witnesses a large swarm of locusts taking off into the sky. On getting a closer look, he is shocked to realize that they are the hybrid locusts that he created. He immediately follows Sophia's school bus. But before him, the locusts reach the bus and attack the children. Peter arrives and drags an unconscious Sophia to his car. Then, in Napa Valley, Maddie and her team reach the farm that was attacked earlier. They see that the locusts have stripped every bush and tree down to the bark. Maddie realizes the severity of the situation and alerts the Department of Agriculture of the dangers. In Washington, D.C., Dan also finds out about the locust infestation and calls Maddie to ask her about it. Since he works in the U.S. Weather Service, Maddie asks him for an update on weather patterns to predict the swarm's next movement. They guess that one of the two swarms that have been formed on each coast will be moving to Pittsburgh in a few hours. Meanwhile, somewhere in Visalia, California, a crowd has gathered for a citrus festival, unaware of the swarm of deadly insects coming their way. Eventually, Maddie and the team reach the citrus festival and start evacuating it. However, before everyone is in a safer location, the swarm attacks them. Amidst the chaos, someone accidentally drops a camera that records the event. In the following scene, the swarm reaches Pittsburgh, forming huge black clouds in the sky. Soon, the insects wreak havoc in the city, entering office buildings and houses via the air vents. At Pittsburgh International Airport, Peter meets a worker from the air traffic control and asks her not to launch planes to the northeast. However, the workers do not take him seriously. Because of their mistake, a plane runs into the swarm and crashes with an explosion. Following that, Peter goes back to the hospital with his wife and daughter. They see the news where the video captured at the Citrus Festival is being broadcasted. Just then, FBI agents arrive to arrest Peter and take him under federal custody. At the same time, Maddie meets her boss, Secretary Morales, and many other officials to discuss their next move. Dan is also in attendance because of his expertise in crops. He recommends they harvest the crops all across the country to starve the locusts and save the crops before they're destroyed. During the meeting, they find the eastern swarm of the creatures have turned carnivorous and have started to eat livestock. They register that if the locusts are starved, they might feed upon animals, and eventually humans. After the meeting, Maddie tells Dan that she is pregnant with his child. He is ecstatic, but they do not have much time to celebrate. Meanwhile, Peter is at the FBI Bureau talking to the officials about a way to stop the locusts. He claims that there is no way to stop them without killing 50% of the American population. The scientists find an alternate way where only 10% of the population will be killed. They plan to drop an extremely toxic VX gas on the locusts to kill them. A while later, Maddie flies in to meet Peter and finds out about the FBI's plan to drop the VX nerve gas. She protests against the plan, comparing it to a nuclear bomb attack that will kill millions of people. Yet, the officials ask her to focus on the billion people who will be saved instead. General Miller wants to do a test of the gas on the swarm that is flying over Ohio. Maddie agrees to it only because she's promised that the test will be done in rural areas with almost no population. Still, she calls the national news and secretly tells them about the test run before boarding the helicopter with the rest of the group. When they are airborne, they're informed that the target swarm over Ohio has moved towards southern Indiana, which is way more populated. If they go through with the plan, they will be killing millions of people just because of the test run. Maddie protests, but General Miller replies that he never confirmed there won't be any fatalities. Desperate to do something, 
Maddie uses a spanner to smash the VX container. Scared that she will kill everyone on board, Miller has to reluctantly turn around before the gas is released. On landing, Maddie calls Dan and asks him to check on her grandfather, Lyle, whose farm lies right in the path of the locusts. Dan leaves for Indiana immediately, while Maddie and Peter do the same. On his way, Peter gets a call from his daughter who has come out of the coma. With renewed motivation, they reach the farm and meet Lyle who is gathering the cattle and moving them indoors. Maddie and Peter help him, and Dan joins them later. Not long after, the farm is attacked by the swarms. The group has to take shelter in a metal grain silo to save themselves. As they brainstorm ideas to keep the insects away from the harvested grains, Maddie remembers seeing a few locusts get killed in the electric fly trap outside. She gets an idea to use an old generator to send an electric current that will hopefully kill the bugs. They try using it, but find out the generator has no fuel. Peter volunteers to get the fuel from the other side of the barn and runs outside with a sheet to protect himself. The swarm attacks him immediately, but he manages to get the generator inside. By this time, he is covered in blood, revealing that the insects have grown carnivorous. Lyle loads up the generator and Dan attaches the cables to the metal shell of the silo. This sends a powerful current through it. The insects that are attacking the silo are killed immediately because of the electricity. Peter struggles because he has lost too much blood and eventually dies. Following that, Dan and Maddie rush to Washington, D.C. At the Department of Homeland Security, the officials agree to Miller's plan to use the toxic VX gas on the swarms. Maddie and Dan enter the debate and try to convince them otherwise. When they suggest using electricity, Miller does not believe it can work. The Secretary of the Department of Energy reveals that it is possible to create a massive electric current to kill the swarms, as both swarms are approaching the continental power grids. Eventually, all the officials support the plan, except Miller, who warns he will act if the plan fails. Maddie remembers that the insects are attracted to light. She calls the USWS, asking them to launch weather balloons near the power lines so the insects would be attracted. The following day, power is switched off throughout the United States. It is rerouted to the two power lines, one each in Western and Eastern America. Maddie and Dan arrive at the site and make the Air Force move the weather balloons closer to the power lines. Soon, the power grids are activated and the swarms fly into the amplified power cables. Unfortunately, the cables burst into flames, but the plan still works. The locust swarms are killed by the electricity. The officials who had been holding their breaths celebrate the success. But General Miller is warned about the consequences of wanting to kill millions of people. The scene shifts to a year later. Maddie has given birth to a child and is living a happy life with Dan. She receives an offer for a new job but consults Dan before accepting, showing that her family is more important to her than her job. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.